set up in 1988, and uh, in reverence to my good friend Mike Tetley out there somewhere, I can dance as well. <laughs> so, since 1988, we've uh, trained about 20,000 volunteers all around the world, but mainly in the UK, on marine mammal rescue and first aid. And we've actually attended uh, an estimated 18,000 incidents. Now, not all of those turn into rescues. Many of them may well be animals that are absolutely fine, or we just need to move on, particularly with seals. Uh, but we do attend every single incident that's uh, called into the office. So we currently have these sort of assets, we've got more as well, but I couldn't fit them on one slide. Uh, but right at the top are our 3,500 current medics. This has been a stable sort of number over the last few years, so we run a lot of training courses. We have between 30 and 40 training courses a year. We do vet training courses as well. Uh, but generally we retain about 3,500 volunteers. We don't at the moment actually work in Northern Ireland though. We publish uh, a handbook that is internationally renowned now. We're, we're on our version 8, our V8 version, and uh, we're currently working on the next version that will probably come in a couple of years' time. We also have a couple of little pocket books that are waterproof. Uh, so one is on cetacean rescue and one is currently in preparation for uh, seal rescue as well. So those can go out on the beach and they've got uh, vet triages in there as well for vets who come and attend the strandings. Just to let you know, I've got 85 slides. I'm, I'm pushing on a bit, or I'm trying to. Uh, just to give you an idea, this was uh, last year, uh, 2018, sorry, 2017 call outs, so that should be, not 2018, getting ahead of myself. And you can see that we are a little bit seasonal. If we start in the middle of the year in June, that's when we start getting the harbour seal pups coming in on the east coast in particular. Uh, and then we have a bit of a, a rise there in September, we then start getting the grey seal pups. Uh, being popped, and that takes us through the winter period as well. 80% uh, or 90% of our rescues are seals, so 10% are other cetaceans. Seals are very much our bread and butter, if you like, as I say, 90% of our rescues, and we get a lot of problems out there. Mainly, that the greater majority of them will be pups uh, that are underweight for whatever reasons. They may have been separated from their mothers. Um, but occasionally you get some pups like this that we're called out to, a nice 45 kilo wiener, um, just in a bad place. So he just got picked up, a bit of a struggle to move him, but he just moved 300 yards down to the beach away from the dogs. But the majority of the uh, pups that we're going to be picking up do need to go into rehab centres, and we have a lot of rehab centres around the UK, RSPCA, the SSPCA in Scotland, Sea Life Centres, the Cornish Seal Sanctuary, people like that, the Blue Reef as well, who have very, very good rehab facilities for seals. Uh, our rescuers are trained on how to catch, handle, and obviously assess these animals, uh, and do a lot of transport. Occasionally we have to tube feed them if they're going on a long journey, We'll uh, tube feed them during the journey. This very often happens uh, at, well, this is in Northumberland, this is uh, close to McDonald's, uh, because we have to let the animals rest after they've been tube fed for a little while, which is about the same time as it takes to get in, get a burger, and uh, come out again. We see things like this, where uh, this seal down in Devon last year was actually speared, so this is a, uh, from a spear gun. We know that that animal is now fine. We couldn't catch it. Uh, but we know that it's actually living its life, the spear has dropped out, thankfully, uh, so that hasn't uh, been a major problem. Uh, this is my spe speciality, getting uh, adult grey seals out of nuclear power stations. Uh, some of them are fine. Uh, this one is a particularly lovely one. Some of them, as you can see from the expression on this face, are going to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, but they come in through the cold water inlet pipe, and uh, get stuck in a huge cooling water tank. We're then brought in with a crane to actually haul them out and then um, well, basically jump on them and take them back out to sea again. Entanglement is getting a big problem. Uh, we've seen more and more of these. You'll have seen my colleague Dan Jarvis's video, the video night, on uh, just one of these uh, releases, but we are getting them more and more, and this can have a very debilitating effect on the young animals as they get entangled, they grow, the net doesn't grow, obviously, and it cuts in. So we do have problems both with uh, fishing nets, monofilaments, things like that. But now we're seeing more recreational uh, materials coming in as well. So this is a frisbee, and this, this young lady, or old lady, uh, was up in Norfolk, and we were trying to catch her. You can see that her body uh, is um, quite badly affected there. 
so we were trying to catch her for about six months. very often with these animals we have to wait until they aren't moving that much so that we can get them. we didn't get these, another rescue group got these, they've got this one i'm glad to say, but when they took the um the frisbee off you can see the damage that it's caused there, there's hardly any muscle there at all. the ah rspca of east finch did a great job of rehab rehabilitating her, putting about two hundred litres of salt into the water every day because salt has a fantastic curing effect and in fact last month she was released and you can see here that so um the only long lasting effect is she's a little bit bug eyed and that was from the constriction but mrs frisbee as she's called is now back in the north sea and quite happy. so let's go back then, i'm now going to go back on a little bit of a history lesson back to nineteen eighty eight which is when we started and there was a fighting december virus that hit the uk and it decimated the harbour seal population. you've already heard about that in a previous lecture about eighteen to twenty thousand harbour seals died uh, which is a huge, huge number. There was another uh, attack of this virus in 2002, but not on our side of the North Sea, so we didn't see much of that. Now, at that time, divers, a group of divers were asked to go out and help the RSPCA to recover these animals and take the ones that could uh, be rehabbed back into uh, rehabilitation at their centre. And uh, you can see here at the end of that net uh, is a very young, well, mid-30s, Alan Knight, who sends his love to you all. He can't be here at the moment. He's uh, actually in the States at the moment. But um, yeah, 30 years ago, he was a slightly different shape. Don't tell him I said that, because I work for him. So anyway, the British Divers Marine Life Rescue was born, and the beginning of it was very much SEALs, and for a while, we got in involved in SEALs. But then the group started doing other things, and in 1992, they went out to the Faroe Islands to look at what was happening out there, did some diving, and found some uh, heads from uh, Atlantic white-sided dolphins. This resulted in a prosecution as well, I think, at that time. But this was being denied at the time by the Faroese. They were still doing the grind, um, doing um, killing a lot of pilot whales, but they weren't uh, admitting to other species. 1993, we got involved in uh, releasing animals from captivity back to the wild. Uh, this is usually in conjunction with Born Free Foundation, and British Divers Marine Life Rescue has been uh, at the centre of trying to close down dolphinariums uh, for quite a while. So these animals actually went uh, from the UK over to Turks and Caicos into a uh, lagoon, and eventually were released back in. But in 1995, we were able to close the last orphanarium in the UK. Um, I have very, very strong feelings about this, as I'll probably say a little bit later. Um, but we do not have any in the UK, and that's one of the reasons that we don't have any rehab facilities for cetaceans in the UK either. In 1993, um, the Brer, we had the Brer disaster uh, in Shetland, where there was obviously an oil tank with crude oil. Um, struck the rocks and we had a lot of wildlife damage there and then again in 1996 the Sea Empress very similar sort of thing a lot of crude oil there thankfully we're seeing less of this now we're not seeing as much crude oil coming in but we are seeing uh, ships that sink and therefore their engine oil is going in so there's a problem there with the highly volatile hydrocarbons affecting, affecting the animals we are still the only rescue organization that will put our boats into oil to go and uh, rescue animals, but thankfully we're not seeing as many as we have in the past. In 1997 we ran our first course, so up until, uh, and we now run courses, as I say, about 30 to 40 courses around the coast. Um, for those of you from the UK, you may recognise this chap on the right, that's uh, Scott Miller, Vet on the Hill. Uh, we do train celebrity vets occasionally as well as proper vets. Well, it came into its own because then we had a, a number of these animals coming in after um, this one on the eastern seaboard and the pathologies show that these animals, these deep divers, begin to die through muscle myopathy, releasing myoglobin into the bloodstream, hitting the kidneys and uh, causing kidney failure within two hours of hitting the beach. So now we know that we really don't have any chance with these unless we can get them back into um, a deep water situation where they can actually uh, be in full suspension. 2011 we started getting mass roundings. You've got to remember these are animals that shouldn't be on shore, so if they come on shore there's likely to be a problem. 60% of the uh, mass stranding cetaceans are safe, because the majority of them are in good shape. 80% of mass stranding if we allow for the animals that we're actually pushing back into the sea. We also uh, are still helping to get uh, animals from captivity back into 
um the wild. this is in turkey a couple of years ago with um tom and misha working again with born free and we are members of the dolphin era free europe trying to end this barbaric trade of um putting animals into captivity. in fifteen we then started doing our large or sorry we had the um entangled whale in iceland that you saw a couple of years ago on brian from ifor's video and we are seeing more and more of these animals coming in now we're seeing more humpbacks coming to us uh, around the country i'm going to skip over sperm whales we've already seen a presentation there unfortunately in the uh in the north sea we have uh an average depth of about 68 meters that's all so no more we can't get them back to deep viable water where they can feed and where they can swim these are all males they made a mistake coming around the top of scotland they should have gone all the way around scotland on their migration we work very closely with the cetacean, uh, cetacean strandings investigation program marine strandings network and um scottish marine animal um, stranding scheme that's in scotland as well so the future what's holding for the future well tagging uh is something that we try to do we've only ever tagged one animal but we've got eight coming to us very soon uh, that Tim Smith is coming again. Um, but science does really help. So everything that you're doing informs us of what we need to know and where we can go in the future. So I'd like to thank everybody.